وفيك بارك الله يا اخي جزاك الله خير بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاه والسلام على سيد الانبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد uh, first of all i would like to thank the organizers of this event and for all of those who have actually put the effort into organizing the national dawah academy i think it's a wonderful initiative and i'm hope that this is able to be replicated throughout you know the united states and i know that we're doing a lot of these courses online but i really hope and pray that we are given the ability to do these classes in person you know throughout the united states and in it, if it grows you know throughout the world ta'ala so i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all of those individuals who are involved all of those who are in the background all of those who are organizing this and all of those who are presenting may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them and raise them in, in knowledge Amin. so the topic that I've been given and that I'm going to be discussing inshallah over 12 weeks is the authenticity of the Quran and I think one of the most important things that we need to understand thematically is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises us and he tells us uh, by saying inna nahnu nazalna dhikr wa inna lahu lahafidhun that we are the ones that sent the reminder and we are going we are the ones that will preserve it so a few things come to mind the first of them is understanding what authenticity is and what it means so there are different ways that people understand authenticity and there are different ways that people deal with it <coughs> excuse me so there are different people that uh, there are different ways that people deal with that and there are different ways that people understand that it's very important for us to understand academically what historicity is how is it that we actually establish a fact how is it that we actually establish a document in this case the document being the word of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the form of the quran and the reason that I mention that is because there are very similar techniques for us in authenticating and realizing how, you know, how true this book is to the word of Allah, similar to how we deal with hadith, which is how true what we have received, those transmissions we received are to the word of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How authentic something is, is how ascribable it is to its source. And that is something that we really need to discuss. And the beautiful thing about this class is that because of the fluidity of it and because of how important it is for us to understand not just the authenticity of the Quran, but authenticity itself. What is it that that term means and how is it that we apply it in our lives and how can we bring parallels to other parts of our life when we establish certain facts, when we establish certain reasons. So that's going to be one part of the discussion. The second part of the discussion, which is something that is just as important, is the historicity of the Qur'an itself. How was the Qur'an revealed? This is something that is really important. How do we deal with some of the abrogated verses? This is something that is vitally important. How do we deal with the Shad Qira'at? How do we deal with those unique readings of the Qur'an? What is the meaning of Ahruf? There are so many questions that are there. There are so many issues that need to be uh, dealt with and I think it's very important for this class to actually come forward and I'm really honored that uh, I have been given the opportunity to present a lot of this. There are many people who are now attacking the Quran, who are attacking its authenticity, uh, who are attacking its veracity and this is a very, very important topic and I understand as of late there is a lot of controversy that's around it and i hope within the class that we're able to open up some of these discussions to have some of those talks to help us navigate okay well what what is the viewpoint that's being presented here and does this conflict you know the other viewpoints that are being presented how do we answer some of these issues and how do we answer some of these problems one of the beautiful things about islam if not the most beautiful thing is how it truly is a religion how it truly is a way of life and that means that any shubha, any doubt that it is thrown at it, it will have an answer for it. That is what a religion is. Islam is not right because all the other religions are wrong. Islam is correct because it inherently is the truth. And we can find and apply that methodology in every single part of the religion. There is nothing that can be questioned that cannot be questioned in this religion. There is nothing that can be brought against it. There is nothing that there's no challenge that Islam will not stand up to. And my experience as an Imam is so telling of the number of challenges that I have faced personally. And, and granted, they are anecdotal, but it is definitely symbolic of the general nature and the general culture that, that is around Islam and the Muslims. This Quran is something that is fundamental to our religion. 
it is part of the revelation that holds our faith together. And it is important that we trust this book. And inshallah, ta'ala, I hope to be part of that journey with you and where we actually see the compilation, how it happened, what were the different stages, what were the differences in the different compilations that happened. Where did these qira'at come from? Why do we have these different readings and what is the purpose behind them? These are all questions that are not the easiest to answer, but they are answerable. And walillahi alhamd, we do have that opportunity. We do have that chance. And it is through programs like this, walillahi alhamd, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us a, a facilitator of these things. And I ask and I hope and I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to use us in his path so that we can further better ourselves, so that we can further better our religion, and so that we can further get a better understanding of not just who we are, but what actually this religion is, what it represents, and the true foundations of it, and how they are rock solid. Allah.